Let's get to the race for the Republican nomination. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has yet to enter the fray, but he's already picking up his first congressional endorsement. It comes from Congressman Chip Roy. He says this, I believe it's time for a new generation of leadership. It's time for younger but proven leadership to offer America eight solid years of transformational change. Let's bring in Brett Baer. And Brett, there is something about being first. What's the strategy here? Good morning. I, I think this is uh, part of what will be a rollout of a number of uh, lawmakers who come out and say that Governor DeSantis should run, uh, and they are staking claim to be the first. Uh, there are also a couple of uh, congressmen in Pennsylvania who've already expressed uh, support for Governor DeSantis, uh, Congressman uh, Barletta and uh, Marino, and they had supported uh, President Trump at the beginning, one of the, some of the first uh, to, uh, to support him. So so uh, you may see this rollout, and it'll be part of whatever happens with the timeline for Governor DeSantis. It looks like he's getting in after the Florida legislature. Mm. I don't know what you make of the comment he made with Tucker the other night. Um, statement, I should say. A lot of candidates weighed in on the topic mm -hmm. of Ukraine, but here's what uh, DeSantis said. He said, while the U.S. has many vital national interests, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between Ukraine and Russia is not one of them. Wall Street Journal went after it today. Ron Santos's first big mistake, that's how they characterize it, framed it this way. The politics of Ukraine may also shift as facts do on the battlefield do. If Ukraine manages a victory, even as Republicans call for retreat, the GOP will have surrendered one of its core selling points as the party voters trust on national security. I, I, I think to be fair here, and DeSantis' statement is more about just territorial that, that phrase caught a lot of people's attention. Uh, but he also said, you, the American taxpayer deserves to know how their billions of dollars are being spent. And for the uh, interventionists, the word he used, uh, who want Putin out, be careful what you wish for, because the next leader would be more ruthless than Vladimir Putin. So I just wanted to frame it all that way and think, how, how do you, how's it play? I think you're right, uh, Bill. There is more nuance to that larger statement than that just that one phrase, territorial dispute. But it did raise some eyebrows uh, because Congressman DeSantis was much more hawkish when it came to fighting um, uh, not the Soviet Union, but Russia's expansion or different countries' expansion efforts. I think that, uh, you know, foreign policy, if we're going to say Republicans really try to look towards Ronald Reagan, uh, peace through strength, uh, you know, we're about 40 years after the evil empire speech for Ronald Reagan, and he kind of laid out how to fight right and wrong, and he did it in a number of different ways, including supporting different countries fighting the Soviet Union uh, with money and, and weapons. So this is going to be a major issue in the Republican primary, I think. And Tucker was right to ask the question. It's fascinating to see the different answers mm -hmm. and how it splits. Indeed. Let's talk about the Democrats for a moment. Vice President Harris was on the Stephen Colbert show. He was asking her about 2024. Well, as the president has said, we're not going to make any announcements tonight on okay. this show. All but right. <laughs> he, he, but, he but he yeah, mind. no, he wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> I'm sure you getting out in front of it. I'm sure President but. Obama used Joe Biden to float a few ideas out there for him here and there. Go ahead. The, Just as, say it. as our Joe Biden has said, he intends to run, and if he does, I will be running with him. Brett, to me, all logic looks like Biden is running, but there is a pretty significant school of thought out there, including amongst Democrats, that Biden will not run again. How do you see it? It's definitely not 100 percent. You're right, Dana. I mean, Democrats are not saying 100 uh, percent, but a lot of them will say that they expect him to run. I think this was part of that rollout. Uh, that interview was interesting also. She focused on Ukraine. Remember, there's a part of the left that's anti-war, and now, you know, the Wall Street Journal pointed out a lot of them have Ukrainian bumper stickers and flags on their cars. Um, it's an interesting, fascinating issue that they're going to hit on. Uh, she also said that uh, the, the show Veep was at very accurate about her job at one point. Oh, uh, boy, which was, was it? The best look on the uh, I mean, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> that's one of my favorite shows ever. I never, I would double over laughing, but I, <laughs> I'm glad that she thinks it's funny. That's probably a good way to cope. Yeah, that's right.
Brett Baer, thanks for it? being here today. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to she step on that it. landmine. She talks about it all the time. <laughs> I have nothing else. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, this is not the five, all right? This is not the five. Thank you, Brett. We'll talk to you <laughs> yeah, soon. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gut felt. All right, see you. <laughs> right on. See you at 6 o'clock. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.